Those who are redeemed under the law, that we might receive adoption unto the Son of Timothy 1 15 through 7, 17. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Jesus Christ might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Isaiah 9, 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and he shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Romans fifteen thirteen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit.
Mine was bigger than yours and I already eaten it. I would not change it. Here, let me taste yours. You haven't started it. I am never going to eat him. I'm going to keep him forever and ever. Eighty little village children had been given gingerbread bears, but hers had surely been by far the most beautiful. Yes, she would keep it forever in memory of tonight. And when, whenever she looked at him, she would remember Christmas Eve, the frosty blue sky, the warm glow of the lighted church, the tree decorated with silver stars, the carols, the crib, and the sweet and sad story of Christmas. I am going to keep him forever in memory of tonight. And whenever I'm going to look at him, I'm going to remember this Christmas Eve. It almost made me want to cry when I thought about the inn where there was no, no place. I would have opened my door and welcomed Mary and Joseph in. Are you all right to run home alone, Annette, or shall we take you to the door? Oh, I would much rather go home alone, and thank you for taking me. Good night, madame. Good night, Lucien. Good night. She had never been out alone at night before, and even this was sort of an accident. She was supposed to have gone to the church on the sleigh with her parents. They had all been thinking about it and planning it for weeks. However, that morning, her mother had been taken ill, and her father had gone off on the midday train to fetch the doctor from the town up the valley. The doctor had arrived about tea time, but he could not cure her in time to get up and go to church as Annette had hoped he would. So to her great disappointment, she had to go with Madame Morel from the chalet up the hill instead. When she had reached the church, it had been so beautiful that she had forgotten everything but the tree and the magic of Christmas. So it had not mattered so much after all. There would have been plenty of room out in the chalet, but maybe, after all, this is the nicest place. The hay is sweet and clean, the, war the cow's breath is warm and pleasant. Maybe God chose the best cradle for his baby after all. Oh, Daddy, did you come out to find me? Yes, you should come inside if your mother's so ill. She's been asking for you for half an hour. Don't cry, Annette. I have a present for you. A present? I've given to her. Your little brother, Danny. Let us go down by the, by the fire and you shall rock his cradle. Now, let's wish your mom a good night. Good night. Your little brother, he's yours, Annette. Take him and raise him and love him for me. I give him to you. It was an uncommon gift. Annette didn't expect such a gift, not even realizing how could she right there fall in love with her newborn brother. On this Christmas night, her mother had gone to spend Christmas in heaven. Oh, 
have to work harder than anyone else just because I don't happen to have a father. Other boys don't have to work before school. Lucien, why don't you get up when I call you? This happens day after day. You're no help to me in the mornings at all. Your sister gets up early enough and goes off to work without any fuss. I know other boys have fathers, but we only have three cows and we can't live without them. You're a big, strong boy now, and it's a shame that you should leave all this early morning work to me like this. <sighs> I work at night, and I never get any play. I have to fetch in the wood, and I have farther up the hill to climb than anyone else. And I have to fetch in the fodder for you, and I clean the sheds on Saturdays. I'm usually done with most of the work by the time you come back from school anyway. I know you don't get as much time in winter as other children do, but I do all I can, and on this early morning, milking is wearing me out. You're quite old enough to do it now, and in the future, you're to get it properly. Now hurry up, or you'll be late for school. <sighs> so unfair. Everyone's against me. It's not my fault I'm not getting my lessons done. I have to work at home. It's reading today, and I bet I'll be bottom again, and I'll show off on that will be top. But she doesn't have to milk cows before work. <gasps> hey! You great clumsy donkey, can you look where you're going? Look at my books, all my work is smudged and torn. I will tell the teacher it was all your fault. All right, there's no need to cry about it. I didn't do it on purpose. Won't hurt you to lose your marks. I'm going on. She wouldn't let me help her anyway. At least I'm in time for school. Inside, he felt really bad about it, but his manners were never very good at the best of times and he tried not to think about it. But getting out of that for Annette was very difficult, and poor girl had quite a struggle. When she got out, she was already half an hour late for school. Annette, what happened to my child? It was all Lucien. He knocked me into a ditch and left me there, and I couldn't get out that fast. Lucien, why did you do that? Don't you see this expresses what kind of person you are? Come here, let me talk with you real quick. The teacher scolded Lucien for behaving in such an unkind way, which cheered Annette up and made her feel much better. Later, when the grades were read out, Annette came out top and felt better. Lucien, however, came out bottom and was told to stay in and do extra work after school. When he was walking home from school, he sat down and thinking he was alone, cried a little. Then he suddenly discovered he wasn't alone. Why are you crying? 
I'm not crying. Oh, you are. I know why. It's because it's because the teacher scored you. Annette told us. Baby, coming to school crying like that. Great, rough bully. Leaving me in the ditch like that and then pushing Danny too? He never did you any harm. Why can't you leave him alone? I'm jolly glad the teacher scolded you today. Come on, Danny. Come home. And so, every time they found a reason to fight. They couldn't get the strength to forgive each other. So because neither would be the first to forgive, the quarrel began. A quarrel that was to last for a long time and was to bring with it a great deal of unhappiness for the both of them. In their childish hearts, a great hatred grew for each other. This hatred is a seed that will only grow if it isn't controlled. In the Bible, book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 29, it states, Don't let tainted speech come out of your mouth, but only such that is good for building up. Adjust to the occasion to give grace to those who listen. At some point, most of us have experienced different kinds of hatred. We are angry with people, or we have a serious dislike or aversion to certain things. However, we must learn to deal with hate when it confronts us, and the Bible has clear instructions on how to deal with it. Who are you picking those for? For Annette. I hate Annette. She's just a show off. But at school, she's hopeless. The little ones are better at math than she is. Even her own cows are no more than her. Give those flowers to me. She can't have them. No, they're mine. You, you can't, can't take bite them. me. You're just a baby. I shall tell my daddy. I shall go straight to this very man. He shall come to your house and beat you. No. Don't. Stay here. Unless you promise not to tell me, I'll drop your kitten into the ravine. Oh, stop. Wait. Don't do it. That's my kitten. Come and get it. Come and stop. Get it. No, don't. Give me down it. here. Now it's mine. Give me it. Down here. <gasps> no, what did you do? Danny, stop. stop. Don't. Don't. Danny? 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 What did I do? I killed him. I didn't want it that way. Danny, Danny, oh, where is he for so long? Annette, take off your basket and go search for Danny. He went to pick flowers in the field and hasn't come back yet. He'll be up in the woods with Papa. I'll go up and see in a few minutes, but let me have a cookie first, I'm hungry. Where's Danny? Danny? He hasn't been near me. He and the kitten left over to the field to pick some flowers for Annette's birthday. Something must have happened to him. Oh, Annette, we must go look for your brother. Danny? Danny? Danny, where are you? The one who lives under the protection of the Most High Danny. dwells in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say concerning the Lord, who is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust, he himself will rescue you from the bird trap, from the destructive plague. He will cover you with his feathers. You will take refuge under his wings. His faithfulness will be a protective shield. You will not fear the terror of the night, the arrow that flies by day, the plague that stalks in the darkness, or the pestilence that ravages at noon. Though a thousand fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, the pestilence will not reach you. You will only see it with your eyes and witness the punishment of the wicked. 
because you have made the Lord my refuge, the most high, your dwelling place. No harm will come to you. No plague will come near your tent, for he will give his angels ordering concerning you to protect you in all your ways. They will support you with their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the young lion and serpent. Because he has his heart set on me, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls out to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and give him honor. I will satisfy him with a long life and show him my salvation. Lord, I ask you, please protect Danny in all his ways. Amen. Daddy, I wonder if Danny has gone to Lucien's house. I've seen him talk to him once or twice. I'll run up and ask. Madame Morel! Madame Morel! Madame Morel, can I please speak to Lucien? Yes, you can, if you find him. My poor baby, he has so many things to do. Helping me milk cows, it's hard, I know, but I have a lot of work too. Um, when you see him, can you please ask him if he hasn't seen Danny because he disappeared an hour ago? Um, listen, what is that noise up in the loft? Lucian, what's the matter? Are you hurt? Danny? Where is he? What have you done with him? Give him back. I, I, don't, I don't know where he is. It's not my fault. What? Wasn't your fault? You're telling lies. You, know, you don't know where he is. Madame, make him speak the truth. Speak. Lucien, where is he? He's, he's a dead. He, he, he must go and show us where. At least my dad can carry him home and then, and later. Lucien, come quickly. You must show us where Danny is. Move. He's down there. I see him. That's him right there. Oh, here's his cat. Hold him. I'm gonna have to get him out of here. Don't worry, Danny, I'm coming for you. Are you okay? Can you hear me? I'm coming for you, Danny. I'll be right there, hold be, on. Be careful. I'll be right there, Danny, you okay? You hear me? Is he alive? He should be okay. He should be okay. He's breathing. Oh, he should be okay. Is he going to be all right? We have to get him to the hospital really quickly. His leg is gonna be broken. Be careful, okay? They must be by the hospital by now. Poor little Danny. Grandma, what shall we do to Lucien? He must be punished. I'll do anything to pay him back. Have you ever wondered, Annette, that when we do something wrong, it often brings its own punishment without anyone else involved in it? Imagine how horrified Lucien was when he saw Danny fall off. Imagine the shame and fear of others finding out what he did. And imagine how frightful he was to even move on with life. Do you think we should give him a second chance and forgive him? 
but he se should be severely punished after what he did. I'm never going to give forgive him. Lucian, when Danny was a child, Annette, when Danny was a child, we took him to church and asked Jesus to look after him. Every day in prayer, we asked God to protect him and hold him in his arms. And even when Danny fell, God still didn't let go of him. Even if he would have died or been killed, God didn't let go of him. He would have been carried straight to heaven. Now wipe your tears and trust God that he will hold on to Danny and do the very best for him. But, but Grandma, why did I, why did God let Lucy and her Danny so? I hate Lucy so much, I would like to, I don't know what I would like to do. Then you cannot pray for Danny. When we pray, we are closer to God, and God is love. And all of our hatred inside of us must melt away, like snow melts in the spring when the sun shines on it. Leave Lucien to God in that. He rewards both good and evil, but remember, he loves Lucien just as much as he loves Danny. Good. Here, follow me. I want to show you something. It's somewhere around here. I, I know this place. Yeah, yeah. That way. Go along. Right here. This is my this is my place right here. Oh. Yeah. Is this where you live? <laughs> I wouldn't call it live. Um, it's a hideout. But here, come around here. Come around here. Let me show you something. You got a good talent there, boy. Here. Grab this right here. Yeah. Ready? Right. Here, st stand right here on this side. Yeah. And work it. There you go. Push it. Good job. Here. Oh. Try this hammer. This hammer will be good. Careful there. <laughs> yeah. You know? Why aren't you at school, boy? Well, I don't know. This is one boy. He was playing at, at the ravine with his kitten. And someone came up to him, started teasing him. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> he dropped his kitten to the ravine. The little boy tried to get it. Then he like fell in, you know. And then it, it wasn't my fault. I, did, I didn't do it on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> so I like, I ran away. I was scared. I heard that story. <laughs> you do something wrong. And now you're scared, and you think you can just run away from it, yeah? Not oh. really. Kind of. Well, you're running. And let me tell you a story about myself. I, um, I...
when I was younger, I was, I was married, and I had a boy about your age, yeah, about as big as you. Like me? Yeah, like you. And, you know, I wasn't working here. I was, I was getting good money at a bank, and I was working at a bank. But then, I did a bad, bad thing. One day, I decided to rob the bank. And you know, I, I went to prison, but, you know, I never got myself, like after I got out of prison, I, I couldn't get myself to look at my family again. I don't even know if my wife's still alive. I don't, I don't wanna go up to my son, it's embarrassing. And I ran away from my mistake, you see, you know, I, I made all the money back, like making these nice things, but I, you know, I know God forgave me, but I can't, I can't come to them. I ran away. Wow, sir. That's, that's pretty sad. It is, but you, you can't make the same mistake. Look, you got a talent. T take your things here. And? Take this block. I'll, I'll give you, this is my, my favorite tool right here, all right? Now, you run along and don't run away from your problems. Don't run away from your mistakes that you made. Kay. Go back to school, all right? Okay. Lucien thought about what the old man said for a long time. And even though he didn't want to go to school, his teacher told his mom and said he had to go to school the next day. However, Lucien had found a new hobby, crafting toys out of wood. He was very happy to be doing something that was good and was planning to do something good with his talent. Okay, class, when all of you will finish this, go to the page 120, and we will continue it after break if you will need it. Now doing your work. Do you know what Lucien did with my brother Danny? So, he dropped his kit into a ravine, and when Danny tried to get it back, he pushed him, and Danny fell and broke his leg. <clears throat> no talking, please. He can never run anymore. You know what? You know what you sh Lucian did? He pushed your brother into the ravine. Poor Danny broke his leg. What? Who? Lucian. He almost killed my little brother. That's bad. Look, he's sitting right there. He's dangerous. <clears throat> no talking, please. Okay. Do your work. Poor Danny. All of this is certainly awful, but maybe he didn't do it on purpose. What? No, he didn't. He did it out of anger. What if he didn't mean to push him off? Maybe he just wanted to tease him. Nonsense. He did it on purpose, and that's that. Are you going against me and siding with Lucian? He pushed him, not me, okay? Nothing so so. I with him. I don't know what to do. Okay, Annette. You didn't finish your work and you're disturbing others. Please come here. So, did you finish your work, 120? No, sir. Why not? I don't know. Okay, go back to your seat and finish your work now. Lucien, stop dropping your books. Okay, class, I think we will finish this. Okay, gentlemen, I want to talk with you real quick. I see that you're the doing great job, right? So I want to give you page 121 and page, and page 122. You will get it? I hope so. Okay, guys. School's over. Go home. I hey! Hope. I said, do a great job. I hate Lucien. Me too. 
Annette tried to tell everyone about what Lucien did to Danny. Soon, the whole village learned about it and began to despise him. Wherever he went, everyone seemed to hate him. But the worst thing was the voice inside his head. He couldn't stop thinking about it. Oh, if only to return everything back to how it was before, he would have never done this horrible thing. Thank you. 
precious Jesus Thank you, Savior I'm standing with the faith of a miracle Who goes there? Me, Lucien. Lucien, Lucien, come on in, come on in. Why, why, why are you out here in the middle of the huge, in the middle of the night and in the middle of a huge snowstorm? You, you once said that you have lots of money to give to someone if they really need it. Yeah. yeah. If you give me your money, I think Danny's leg by me might be paying better. Well, yeah, but... It's, it's a lot of money. I need to make sure it's in good hands. It's, it doesn't get lost. Well, there's a doctor at the hospital where my sister works. Um, she said he could heal broken bones and cure lame people. I'm going to go uh, see him. I'm going to go ask him to see if he could come and see Danny. In this weather? Yeah. How are you going to do that? On my skis. You think you could do it? Yeah. But how do I know it's going to be in good hands? What's what's the doctor's name? His name is Monsieur Givet. Monsieur Givet? Yeah. Here, move, move, move. Here, here. Take this and this. Go, 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 go. All the money. Go. Take it. It should be enough. Tell, tell Monsieur Givet that it's a repayment for debt. Okay. Go ahead. I won't forget. Wait, Lucien. Don't tell him where I live. Okay? I won't. Okay. Wait, Lucien. What? Don't, don't tell him my name either. I won't. Do you remember what it's for? Yeah. What is it for? The payment of a debt. Okay. Go on. His adventure had begun. He had to be very quick. The snow was still falling. Very soon, the pass would be impossible to cross if it was not so already. Now he had reached the lowest part of the valley and had to start to climb over the pass that ran between the two mountains. He suddenly felt terribly lonely, but he pushed the thought away and began his climb. Once again, he went into the woods and climbed, weary and afraid. These were dark, strange woods that he did not know and wasn't even sure if he was on the right path. If he wasn't, it might lead him to a ravine. He could hear the howling wind and a rushing stream above him and his skis seemed heavier and heavier. He climbed through the woods for three hours, his mind full of fears and horrors of all the dangers that were to be found on the mountain. Avalanches, treacherous snowdrifts, breaking tree boughs, of course, he could go back. 
He stopped for a moment wondering why that thought had not occurred to him before. How simple it would be to buckle on his skis and zigzag down the forest path and go home. If Jesus really loves me perfectly, he couldn't let me come all this way for nothing. The wind was roaring horribly now, and the great trees seemed to be crying aloud and tossing their arms. He was nearly at the top of the forest, out on the wild wastes of the pass, where the wind could pick him up and whirl him over the rocks like a snowflake. He found his teeth were chattering, and he was crying. As he stooped to buckle his skis, he suddenly remembered that warm, sheltered moment. He, Annette, and Grandmother sat around the stove together, and Grandmother had talked about being afraid. Perfect love drives out fear. If we really fear, if we really believe Jesus loves us perfectly, there is nothing left to be afraid of. If Jesus loves us perfectly, he will never let anything really harm us. Lucien realized he was not alone after all. Grandmother had said that Jesus loved him perfectly, and if he loved perfectly, he would not leave a child alone in darkness and danger. It was just as though someone stronger than the night the wind, the terror, and the darkness had suddenly come to him and taken his hand and pointed up the mountain. Lucien decided to go on. Guys, he's waking up. Quick, call the doctor. Doctor, doctor, come quick. There's a little boy. He walked through the whole valley alone. He needs your help. He's barely alive. I'm Monsieur Givet. I don't know you, but I understand that you wanted me. Are you a great, famous doctor? No, I'm just a doctor. Can you make lame children walk? So it sometimes depends on the, on the situation. Well, he's lame because um, he fell into a ravine. He only walks, he walks with a crutch and a big foot. Who does? Little Danny Bernier. He's six, he lives in the house next to mine. I came to ask if you can make him well. I've got enough money with me. How did you hear of me? My sister told me about you last night. My sister's a nurse here. How did you get here in the storm? I came over the valley on my skis. You could have done that. Boy, not in this weather. Well, I did. There was no other way. Please, sir, would this be enough to make him better? My boy, do you know how much this is? Where did you even get this much? Um, my sister said you need a lot. Is that enough? Depends. You want to buy my clinic too? It's far too much. Well, an old man I'm friends with, he gave it to me. And there is a message. He said it was the payment of debts. And you were to take it all. Who is this old man? Just tell me that and you should go to sleep. What's his name? Please, sir. I don't know. Where does he live? He made me promise not to tell you. The payment of debt. Hmm. Will you be able to see the 
little boy I told you about? Yes, after we order food for both of us, you could tell me more about the man. And we'll uh, tell me more about the old man and this little kid, who, uh, little, ki little cripple. Well, I can't tell you about the old man, sir. I promised him. It's kind of a secret to me, and only I go to him. He told me to tell you it was a payment of debt and nothing else, sir. And he's been kind to me. I can't break my promise. Okay, I won't ask you any more about the man, but tell me more about this little cripple. How did it happen and when? It was, it was my fault, really. It was last spring. I was teasing him by pretending to drop his kitten into the ravine, but then I accidentally did. I felt really bad. And then he tried to get it, but he fell and hurt his leg, and he's never been able to walk normally, only with crutches. And I thought maybe if I... We'll go see the child together. You know, you have a lot to be thankful for. You would have made it past the past if God didn't help you. I know. You see, Last night, I was, I was praying to God so that Danny would be made better. His leg would heal. That's when my sister told me about you. And so I thought that was God's answer. So I went to go look for you. But then I started doubting. And I remembered something from Christmas, last Christmas, that strengthened me. What did you remember? Some, some Versus Danny's grandma uh, told us. Wait, I don't remember exactly what it said. But it, it was something about that God's love is perfect. That he'll, he'll, never, he'll never leave you. Yes, I definitely think that the perfect love of God is the only thing that showed you the right path here and gave you the courage to go on. He has been very good to you, Lucien. Let's pray before our food arrives. Okay. Lord Jesus, you were near to me on the mountain, and I wasn't afraid. Don't go away again. I want to open my door. Please come in. 1 John chapter 4, verses 18 through 19. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. With this verse in his heart, Lucien went through a severe storm and was able to do a great deed to correct his mistake. He had been honored above everybody. The wrong he had done had been forgotten and forgotten forever. Danny could walk as if he had never fallen, thanks to Jesus and the doctor, who was in fact the, woods, the woodsman's son, and thanks to Lucien's struggle, was able to be reunited with his family. Jesus brings his perfect love into our hearts. It drives out our selfishness and unkindness, and it can drive out our fears. If he loves us perfectly, and he does, he will never let anything really bad hurt us. So there is nothing to be afraid of. This story teaches us what the healing power of repentance and forgiveness can bring us as we heed our Savior's voice in our hearts. Annette and Lucien asked Jesus to enter their hearts. They were able to forgive each other. Some heavy load fell out, and joy returned to their hearts. May joy, peace, and love from the Father fill your hearts on these Christmas days. Merry Christmas.